Today's Wednesday, September 5th, 2018, and it is that time of the week. You're tuned in to the Elevator Radio Show, a weekly program dedicated to covering news and information on elevators, escalators, and moving walkways. Produced in the wee hours of the morning, a new show is uploaded every Wednesday, sometimes even before you get out of bed. Listen to some of the comments sent in from our audience. Rob from New York writes, Tom, are you f***ing insane? You actually get up at 2 a.m. each Wednesday to put this show out? Man, you must love elevators. Tim from Illinois writes, I'm not sure why I listen, but ever since I tuned into the first show back in 2007, I've been addicted. Matt in Texas writes, I like your safety messages, Tom. It's important to remember them each and every day. And he also adds, When am I going to win the monthly prize pack giveaway? Ron from California sent this in. Despite your inability to pronounce words in the English language, I tune in each week and am glad that you offer this service to the industry. It's better than Google News Alerts. Sarah from Washington writes, Love the show, Tom, and look forward to it each week. I'm glad I signed up for the newsletter. You provide a valuable resource for the industry, not only for North America, but worldwide. Enjoy the show. And now, here's your sleep-deprived host, Tom Seibert. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you are listening or watching the program. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for joining me today. This is show number 514, I believe, and it is good to be alive. Yes, it is. It is in Chicago where it rains, or it has been raining, it seems like, every day, or a chance of thunderstorms. It's hot. It's just crazy. I don't quite understand it, but... Um, I hope everybody had a great Labor Day weekend. I know uh, pretty much everybody should have had off on Monday if you were were in the North American or United States uh, living in our our wonderful country. If you were in some other country, you probably did not have that day off unless you made up some kind of holiday on your own to go celebrate. I don't know. Uh, But anyway, it is good to be here this morning. Uh, Not a ton of content to talk about on the show today, but a couple of articles definitely worthy of sharing with coworkers and friends, especially, you know, as they relate to safety. Um, Yeah, just been busy. It's not getting any less busy, which is totally fine. I just need to figure out a way of uh, getting uh, just trying to, you know, reel everything in. So we're focusing on priorities that we have to take care of at work, at home, all that good stuff. It's just, you know, it can get overwhelming at times. And all I can say to myself, which uh, my wife tells me all the time, is to, you know, tell your worries to go away, which is good advice to have because at the end of the day, you know, the more you worry about something, um, the more difficult it can be to find a solution or move towards something on that uh, on that level. Right now, currently trying to hire some people at work for my day job, not for the show, and I was amazed. We typically uh, post ads on Craigslist and you know, for the immediate area of where the company's at. Did not get a whole bunch of people responding to it, which was kind of a shock, but it had been a while since we've had to hire anybody. Posted over on Indeed, and I got flooded with people. I mean, it was just unbelievable the number of people that are unemployed. So I, I mean, or looking for a job, or or trying to, to do better. And it was kind of scary in some in some cases because it's almost too many to go through, or too, or too overwhelming. And being a guy who has been doing this for a while, or running a, running a company, I was shocked at just the response rate to that because normally. I think the last time we ran an ad in the paper, we received probably that many applications from walk-ins, people who came in, filled an application and an a proficiency test. But having it done online is like, it's kind of crazy because you see the quality of workers that are out there now looking for jobs. And it's a little scary, to be honest with you. So, and a little overwhelming at the same time. So anyway, Just amazed at that. I mean, technology is awesome. Technology is there to help us in so many of the day-to-day activities that we do, but at the end of the day, it can be a little overwhelming. That's the only point I really want to make with that. So anyway, got a good show for you today. Looking forward to delivering it to you. And um, But uh, yeah, it should be good. I'm tired. It's another early week of, uh, you know, coming into work and trying to get caught up on projects we got going on. And, um, it just, uh, it's like I said, a good problem to have, but at the same time, it's just the demand, the demanding, um, projects that are out there, not necessarily from our immediate customers, but from the end user 
is a little is a little tough to take on occasion, but we just deal with it the best we can. And I know all of you out there have the same kind of issues you're dealing with. So the best thing that we can do is just kind of band together and do our best to help each other out. That's all I can say. And work safe at the same time. Make sure that there are no situations that you put yourself in or that your workers are put in that would jeopardize that safety. No matter how much money somebody wants to pay you to get a job quick, done quicker or how much somebody wants to, uh, you know, cut shortcuts to, to get something done sooner. So, okay, September is the month of meetings. The Wisconsin Elevator Symposium is next week. I will be there for the evening event. Looking forward to that. Like the Grand Geneva is an awesome place to go. It's probably one of the nicest places um, that I enjoy going to um, outside of work. And it's just a neat place. If you've got time to visit Lake Geneva, it's also a cool, cool place to go. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing so many that come out for that event to get their QEI credits. And if you're in need of those or educational opportunities, please uh, visit the NASO International website. On top of that, we got the NAC convention in Atlantic City. That is the end of September. So almost all ready for that. Um, looking forward to seeing so many of you who, um, you know, who attend that event as well. It's a good opportunity for us to, uh, to, to meet and greet and, and so many of people that listen to the program. So then after that kind of calms down a little bit. So anyway, I will cover the news of the week next and, um, and remember just to, uh, to be as safe as you possibly can. And if you, if you find this article that you thought was worthy of sharing, please do so. Please share it with coworkers if you believe it can help in safety, if you can believe it, it can help with um, improving your business or whatnot, please uh, please do so. You don't have to give me credit or anything. It's all online. I'll Google whatever. So, um, yeah, so stay dry out there. So news is up next. Let this week's news stories give you a lift on what's happening in the vertical transportation arena. Each news segment is organically dug and fresh with news stories of the week. Got lift? If not, stay tuned. Alrighty, the first news article talks about the space elevator. And Japan is beginning testing on the elevator. And I I think last week I was the one that said this is never going to happen. So apparently I was, um, it's closer than I thought. Although I don't think it's as close as it needs to to get. And this is under the category science fiction and gizmodo.com. But but there were two or three articles that that, uh, tied into this article. Japanese team is testing a small prototype space elevator, according to news reports. It's certainly not a fantastical many kilometer a long cable science fiction, but it demonstrates that at least someone is serious about this tech. It's it's you know what it it um, it demonstrates that somebody has lots of money to spend, or the government does. So what they're going to be doing is they have two satellites, I believe, or one satellite that they're going to be launching into space, or maybe it's already there. I don't really know. And they're going to extend a ca- uh, cable, a thirty-two foot cable, from one to the other. Um, and I'm not quite sure. No, I do not want to subscribe. Go away. Uh, not sure quite what this is necessarily going to to um, confirm, other than the fact. <coughs> excuse me. They can roll a cable out from one satellite to the other, which I wouldn't think is a big deal. I think the big deal is actually getting it into the atmosphere and then tethering it to the Earth. How in the world are they going to do that, right? Um, seems like a big big project to try to try to figure out how to how to accomplish uh sad news or terrible news coming from uh tehran at a construction site there there was an elevator that uh, apparently collapsed or plunged more than 20 stories and killed six workers on it i don't know if this was a construction uh construction lift or whatever but this last sentence says that all safety measures are often poorly enforced in iran um, because they don't have to. That's the bottom line. And until countries truly step up and look out for the workers in those countries, nothing's ever going to change. Workers are expendable. And I don't consider Iran a development country, but I, uh, I don't think it's necessarily on the cusp of uh, modern technology either. Okay, New Times of Indian Origin. This is kind of a cool, just funny article. Not even funny, I'm sorry. It's a, it, it's an, a pretty, it's a good article talking about the um, origins of ordinary things, the elevator. I would not call an elevator ordinary by any means, although many probably in the public sector or those that use this type um, elevators and escalators may seem 
or may think of these as, as ordinary. They are far from ordinary. They are amazing devices, and I'm not just saying that because I am partial, but um, yeah, it's uh, kind of cool. So, But I am glad that elevators have not gotten to the point where they are like your car, where they monitor every single device on um, that's part of its system with sensors and whatnot. I got a friend who's trying to get his car, his van to pass the vehicle inspect uh, emissions. And what he's found is that it's like every sensor has failed and he's got to go through the whole thing and try to get that all fixed, which uh, it's kind of crazy. Okay, next news, uh, next link actually is Chicago Elevator Association meeting is tomorrow night. Uh, dinner, um, Joe Donnelly is going to be providing a Chicago Code update if you want to attend. There's a September news publication in there and then the flyer as well. If you haven't RSVP'd already and you plan on attending, please send an RSVP through this website link. It's on the, it's on the webpage here. I am probably not going to be able to do that. We have night in the classroom. For, for some reason, I'm not sure why we do that at the high school level, but um, so I have that tomorrow night. I'm trying to get out of it, but I uh, I, I don't think I'll be able to. So, um, yeah. And basically, it's, it, it's kind of silly. Night at the classroom is, is you go to your kids' classes, and they have an A and a B day, okay? This is high school we're talking about, and you're there for five minutes, and then you got to go to the next classroom. So whenever I go to this thing, I literally get lost in the school. And I end up like walking around the hallways, which totally triggers anxiety and nightmares about being in high school again, not being able to find my classroom or forgetting your locker combination. I'm telling you, it's like I, teachers don't want to be there. Parents don't want to be there. Uh, and the kids volunteering to try to help parents find classrooms don't want to be there either. It's, it's, it's very, it's. It's a cluster, basically. Anyway, but if you have an RSVP, please, please do so. Okay, 15 to 20 people rescued from elevator in Vegas. I think I covered... Yeah, I did. This was actually from last week's uh, link. If you didn't check that out last week, you can uh, you can do so there. Oh, come on. Just get me back. I hate these pop-up ads. I didn't ask for pop-up ads to, to show up in my window screen, right? I guess that's the trouble with free. There's nothing free in the world. Judge asked to reconsider two million jury verdict. I don't quite understand this necessarily. I do understand the premise of this, but the NewsTribune.com reporting that uh, an elevator company is asking a judge to reconsider a jury of two million award, a two million dollar award to a California man who claimed on the lawsuit he was injured by a sudden drop in a Lake Tahoe casino elevator. Again, I wasn't part of this case or on the jury or whatnot, but you figure that if a two million dollar uh, jury verdict was was issued. There had to have been some type of proof without reasonable doubt that this actually happened. But I've seen crazier things happen um, on juries. And um, so who knows? But the reality is, is that, um, you know, maybe 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 we do, do we need more sensors in our elevators to try to combat and prevent this from happening, whether it's cameras on elevator sills or or ledges to make sure elevators are leveling or uh, some type of uh, device that measures the speed and the uh well i already have that kind of stuff but some kind of reporting function that you can actually confirm that an elevator didn't drop or an elevator level properly etc cetera, etc cetera, without reasonable doubt and uh, unfortunately in the the legal system it all comes down to whether or not the devices that you have set up to do those types of checks and balances are a accurate b tested by a third party and c um uh, can can the results can be held up in court, you know, based on the device itself, and that's it's just frustrating. So it's uh, it's not easy. I guess I should say, and it could definitely add a lot more money to uh, elevator systems all over the place. But on this on the on the side, um, they could also prevent these types of uh, litigation cases if um, details were provided without reasonable doubt that there was no incident that could have caused. Uh, the injuries that were, you know, being uh, that that are being claimed happened. Not to say this didn't happen or did, but just interesting. Okay, the link for the Wisconsin Elevator Symposium is online. I've got that right there. I don't. Uh, if you want to attend, make sure you get your registration in much sooner than later. Putting these kinds of events together is not an easy easy task by uh, by any means, and um, obviously late late to the party type people are not. Um, 
are not, uh, <laughs> it's just, it gets a little frustrating. I'm one of those people. I don't mean to, but it just kind of happens sometimes. Um, elevator problems continue at a housing high rise in Kentucky. I'll let everybody watch the video on their own, but, uh, apparently, um, had a couple shutdowns yesterday. It was hot yesterday. It was really hot. Actually, this was on the first of September. So it would have been Saturday. So there's a good chance that perhaps it was a weekend. Elevators being used much more often by those that might not have work or be their home going out and in. But it's hot. It's a hot weekend. At least in Chicago it was, and it was brutal. It's hot and sticky. Lots of you know rainstorms rolled through. Kids played uh, football Friday night. They won, but there's a rain delay. Didn't get it. You know, didn't end until like 12 midnight. It was just man. It was just just hot. Next news article, elevator case leads to indictment. I have no idea what the hell this article is about or what it's saying. I don't really care, but it's just interesting, I guess, that somebody read about it. I have no idea. There's some, I, just, I just read this and I, and I see blah, 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 blah. I don't really know what happened. Somebody bribes and somebody being indicted about an elevator. I don't know. I, I wish it made sense. I wish somebody could have written this thing so as if I were in first grade. Uh, because it's not really clear on what was written about. So, Okay, next one is in uh, the Times of India has a report talking about no escalator advisory led to accident rail, rail, railway station. I don't know if there's a translation thing here or what, but what the hell is an elevator advisory? Is that like, hey, be advised. I'm sorry, escalator. There's an escalator coming. I'm assuming it's an escalator sign, but I don't want to assume anything because... You, you know what assuming does, right? Yeah, it makes that an ass out of you and me. Use that. <laughs> yeah, I want to block that. Anyway, I'm assuming it's like a warning. It's got to be a warning, right? Advisory. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, I figured that out on my own. Yeah, yeah, all right. Next news article, elevator ribbon, ribbon cutting at the Calumet Theater. It's kind of cool, although the... Logo on this image kind of looks like the Elevator Riders Riding Club a little bit. I don't know if I should feel honored or upset. Anyway, the Elevator Project began in 2013, and they had a goal of raising $300,000 so that they could, you know, those that with mobility, needing, requiring um, vertical mobility in buildings. I don't think that's politically correct. Um, where are you? Could get up and down into uh, into the theater, so that's cool. Uh, next article: Twenty six college students, instructors trapped in elevator for hours. I, at first, I read this, and this is the kind of thing where we, you know, assuming is never good. But I read this, I'm like, man, I touched a lot of people in a passenger elevator until I saw the video, and I, <laughs> no thanks. I realized it was a freight elevator. What bothered me a little bit though was that. The reporter at the end of the piece says that, well, it was a freight elevator. It shouldn't 26 people should have been finding it, you know, which which may or may not have been the case, but they should have cited or, or backed that up with some with like a weight capacity. Well, the elevator had the freight elevator had 10,000 pound capacity, so it should have been fine. But they didn't do that because it made it seem like all freight elevators can handle no matter, you know, handle handle any weight you put on it, which is not not the case at all. Next news article, transit escalator woes. And it looks as if the students were like on some type of um, tour and uh, and then just got stuck. They were stuck for a couple hours. San Francisco Gate has an article, transit woes, escalator at brand new Trans Bay Center already out of service. This does happen, unfortunately, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's hard. That's all I can say. I'm so glad none of what I do touches escalators. <laughs> That's all I can say. Man. Yeah, they're just... That's all I can say. Okay, next article. This one kind of concerned me a little bit, and I realize it's a, quote, simulated accident. Uh, and I think this actually happened in Sydney, although I don't know if it's Sydney, Australia. I didn't, you know, care enough to... I didn't care enough to try to find out where this was exactly, but apparently medical students were confronted with an injured passenger in an elevator accident. And basically what this was, a terrible accident. A man's leg has been trapped between the doors of an elevator. My God. I'm like, 
this shouldn't happen for one. Pick some kind of accident that's actually going to happen. If you want to turn this into something else, then turn it into a work-related accident. But don't don't put something out there that literally should not happen unless you're in some developing country because the the reality is is that it shouldn't it shouldn't happen if you got the correct proper um you know safety devices on it. So that that just what got me on this one. I was like, "Oh, come on." You know, can't you pick something else? Can't you pick something that's that actually could happen or or I'm not saying this couldn't happen, but it's not very likely that it would happen. So anyway, but it sounds like a neat exercise. Good practice. Maybe that's what we need when we talk about safety training. You know, I don't know. Next news article, and our last one actually the uh, of the show, uh, broken elevator inside Miami courthouse disrupts court paying taxes. You think that uh, they take, you know, provisions to ensure that taxes are being paid at the very least. But apparently for more than three months, a broken elevator inside a Miami County courthouse has created serious complications for some residents who can't make it up three flights of stairs to pay their taxes or make it to court hearings. You think you're going to get the, you know, off the hook on that? You know, oh, I couldn't get up to pay my taxes. From a lot of the standpoint for the county, you want to see it fixed before something happens. Uh, but they're talking, or somebody cited, was cited in the article talking about a drive that is no longer available and they today to make something custom. So I don't know really what that is, but um, I wouldn't doubt it. There's a lot of old equipment out there running. And, you know, whoever designed elevators back in the day and only thought one would be, you know, one would be enough for a courthouse or any kind of public, public building is was sadly mistaken. And, and um, but that's just what they did. That's just what they did. So anyway. Well, that's going to do it for the show, everybody. That was a pretty quick one. I like that. And um, But, yeah, if you enjoyed any of those articles and you want to share those with your friends, your colleagues, your coworkers, whoever, your enemies, please do so. And uh, hopefully all of us together can make our industry a safer one and make sure each and every one of us gets home safely to our family members who love us so dearly. All right. That's it for today. Now for a full, you know, full day of work, and uh, and we'll be back next Wednesday. So be safe, take care, have a great rest of the week. Watch again out for those little kitties running to the bus stops and stuff like that as you go home and into work each day. And uh, observe those twenty mile per hour speed limit zones by those school areas because the cops are out there uh, giving tickets. All right, so not that they gave me one, but just heads up on that. Um, all right, you everybody take care and we will talk to you next week. Bye-bye.